The muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm are the flexors and pronators. They can be divided into a superficial, intermediate, and deep layer. There are four muscles in the superficial layer. They attach proximally at the medial epicondyle of the humerus by a common flexor tendon. The pronator teres muscle flexes and pronates the forearm and is innervated by the median nerve. The flexor carpi radialis muscle flexes and abducts the hand at the wrist and is innervated by the median nerve. The palmaris longus muscle flexes the hand and tenses the palmar aponeurosis and is innervated by the median nerve. And the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle flexes and adducts the hand at the wrist and is innervated by the ulnar nerve. The intermediate layer of the anterior compartment contains the flexor digitorum superficialis. This muscle flexes the wrist, it flexes the proximal interphalangeal joints of the middle four digits, and it flexes the proximal phalanges of the MCP joints. This muscle is innervated by the median nerve. The deep layer of the anterior compartment has three different muscles. The flexor digitorum profundus flexes the wrist and the distal interphalangeal joints of the middle four digits. The median nerve innervates the lateral part of this muscle that flexes digits two and three, and the ulnar nerve innervates the medial part of this muscle that flexes digits four and five. The flexor pollicis longus flexes the wrist and the MCP and interphalangeal joints of the thumb. It's innervated by the anterior interosseous branch of the median nerve. And the pronator quadratus pronates the forearm and binds the radius and the ulna together, and it's innervated by the anterior interosseous branch of the median nerve. Muscles of the posterior compartment of the forearm are the extensors and supinators. In the superficial layer, we have the extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. Both of these muscles extend and abduct the wrist joint and are innervated by the radial nerve. The extensor carpi ulnaris extends and adducts the wrist joint and is innervated by the posterior interosseous branch of the radial nerve. The extensor digitorum extends the wrist and the MCP and interphalangeal joints of the middle four digits. It's innervated by a deep branch of the radial nerve. And the extensor digiti minimi extends the wrist and the MCP and interphalangeal joints of the fifth digit, and it's innervated by the posterior interosseous branch of the radial nerve. In the deep layer of the posterior compartment, we have the supinator. This muscle supinates the forearm and rotates the radius in order to turn the palm anteriorly and superiorly. It's innervated by a deep branch of the radial nerve. There are four outcropping muscles in the deep layer of the posterior compartment. The abductor pollis longus extends the wrist and abducts and extends the thumb at the carpal metacarpal joint. The extensor pollis brevis extends the wrist, extends the proximal phalanx of the thumb at the MCP, and extends the carpal metacarpal joint. The extensor pollis longus extends the wrist, extends the distal phalanx of the thumb at the interphalangeal joint, and extends the MCP and the carpal metacarpal joint. And the extensor incidus extends the wrist and extends the second digit. All four of these muscles are innervated by the posterior interosseous branch of the radial nerve. One very important muscle that we haven't talked about yet is the brachial radialis. This is located in the posterior compartment of the forearm, but it's actually a flexor of the elbow and it's innervated by the radial nerve. This muscle is an exception to our rules that flexor muscles are in the anterior compartment of the arm and that the radial nerve only innervates extensor muscles. The carpal tunnel is a passageway deep to the flexor retinaculum. It connects the mid-palmar space to the anterior forearm. The flexor tendons from the anterior compartment and the median nerve pass through the carpal tunnel to supply the hand. It's clinically significant because any inflammation in this area is going to damage the median nerve, which would lead to tingling or loss of sensation in the hand.